Greetings, everybody. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Ad Saturday. I'm Zipo Zipo Stayle. I'm the program curator and host for the sessions. We're excited to have you joining us today as we look at the, po at the work um, of former poet laureate that take your rapidly from the hospital. We have three guests today, uh, Dr. Uhuru Palafala, Sandy Lengiti, and Lisekhora Mpulu Geng, who will join us on the second segment of the session. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time today, uh, who might not be familiar with Ad Saturday program, today we are on our fifth session. Mm -hmm. And previous sessions have included films and discussions on late Penny Whistle Play and musicians, Aaron Big Voice Jack Lirole, ceramic artist Me Maguarela, Elizabeth Magahane, and painter, poet, and musician Luffy Fitladi. Last week, we had a look at uh, the fashion design work of filmmaker Mercy Badi Wopa. All these sessions, uh, previous sessions, will be available on the Art and Ubuntu Trust uh, YouTube channel. In fact, two of the sessions are already there uh, the Big Voice session and Me Maguarela Elizabeth. Um, the Art Saturday program derives from a film series uh, titled South African Arts Past and Present, which was produced by Bridget Thompson, Abdul Kadir Ahmed Said, and the late Digan Gaba. And the films provide an introduction into understanding the roots of South African aesthetics and look at how a number of artists, musicians, writers have shaped the artistic expression. And with the series, we focus on literature, on music, and on art, and it is geared towards workshop or classroom situations and look to expose a deep and rich, large land told South African uh, heritage in the arts. So today, as we normally do, we will start by screening this for a film. And this film is very short, approximately 21 minutes. Then immediately after the screening, uh, I will introduce you to our guests officially, um, and they will give us a very short introduction uh, into the topic that you've just viewed. So I think without wasting any further time, we can just go straight forward into the film and then come back. Yeah? Okay. All right, all right. Uh, we're back with the second part of our session. Welcome back and greetings to all those that are joining us. Just a reminder that these sessions, the art set sessions are designed to support professional development for teachers, aspiring artists, writers, and musicians between the ages of 15 and 25. Uh, we recognize the potential that is embedded in arts to create meaningful learning experiences for the youth and we believe that teachers need to foster understanding, critical thinking, and imagination. And now I would like to introduce you to our speakers. We have poets in the house. <laughs> click, click. Um, uh, we have Sandy Lengidi. Let me start with him. He was born in Freiheit, Kwazulu uh, Natal. He grew up in Amashongwa on the south coast of Durban. He's a poet, a literary critic, among many other things. He wrote the concept paper towards the inception of South Africa's poet laureate prize on behalf of the Rights Associates and the Department of Arts and Culture. Sandile is an avid advocacy for literary translation. Welcome to Sandile. And the second speaker, we have poet, Dr. Uhuru Palafala. Dr. Palafala lectures in the Department of English at the Stellenbosch University. And in 2016, she obtained her PhD in English literature from the University of Cape Town with a dissertation on our protagonist, the late Ndadego Roberts of Brawili Khosetile. Dr. Palafala was the driving force behind last year's reprint of Malibongwe 
Poems from the Struggle by NC Women, an anthology of poems originally published in 1981. She is also finalizing a monograph on Dade Hosidile's life and work and is editor of the upcoming publication, The, collection, the Collected Poetry of Gorabetsi Hosidile. Welcome, Snissi, and thank you for being with us. Our last, uh, our third guest is poet and scribe Lisiho Rambulugeng, who was born in Orlando West in Soweto. He comes from a Black consciousness era of the 70s and 80s. Uh, Rambulugeng is many poet, uh, poetry and mixed genre collection include Half a Century Thing, Head on Fire, Rant Notes, Poems from between 2000, um, 2001 and 2011, The Pavino Sevens and Horns of Hondo. He's also the author of the novels, Bird Monk Sedding, White Heart Prolonged to Hysteria and Black Heart Epilogue to Insanity. Rampuru Gang is a PhD candidate at Rhodes University working on thesis on the latent that the Mafika acquired. Greetings, Lisiho. Um, so what we will do around about now is I will uh, hand it over to our guest speakers and I will start with the uh, Sandy Lingit as I did with the biographies. Um, hello Sandy. If you could please um, just what we'd like to do with this session is, is to um, get a very short introduction from um, our guest because the introduction will be no less, uh, no more than six minutes. Um, and, and thereafter we will open it up a little bit to the floor. And if we have uh, teachers and or students or actually everybody is, is uh, welcome to contribute um, by asking questions or by just um, giving them an input of what they get from um, the film and from what Ndate Khosutile shared with us. Can I start with Sandile? Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, all your mics are muted, and could you please unmute your mics when you uh, when you would like to speak or when it's your turn to speak? It looks like Sandile's um, screen is frozen from my side. I don't know if it is. Okay. Um, I will try and find out what's happening with Sandile. Uh, do you mind Uhuru just taking over and then we will get back to Sandile in a short while. Yeah, greetings. Thank you, uh, Zippo. Hi to you. Um, uh, my fellow panelists, I see um, Rampolo Gang is not present to receive my greetings, but to you too, Sandile, greetings. And of course, greetings to everybody who's here in the space. Uh, I'm glad to be here to talk about the life and work of um, the poet and prof, Georabe uh, Tsukhositsili. I want to just begin by reflecting on um, the consistency of his politics, which for me was a surprise when I was doing my research uh, since 2012. Uh, on his life and work, I would find interviews from the earliest was 1973, an interview from 1973, in which he spoke about the, the, the very um, influential role of his mother and his grandmother in his life. And I saw another interview from 87, in which he did the same. And when I eventually met him, when I was doing my PhD research on his work and interviewed him, um, the same kind of 
um, message came through. The most important people in my life, my mother and grandmother, these are the people who built me, who dreamed this dream for me, and who influenced me and impact me, who impacted me to become this cultural and political figure that I, that I am. So for me, I, I want to make that comment first and foremost, that this is something that he has been pressing on for decades, for decades. And uh, when I interviewed his fellow comrades, his peers, both in South Africa and the US, they also brought it up. They said, that man, eh? what's happening with, the, with that man? He's, he's really uh, talking about his grandmother all the time. If you ask him about his influences, it doesn't start with, you know, um, the Richard Wrights, the um, Ken Tembas, who were his peers before he went into exile. He always starts with his grandmother and mother. And as he would say, in that order. So that really, as, as, as a researcher, uh, pressed me and, and tasked me to, to listen and heed that voice and hear him. What is he trying to tell us when he's saying his grandmother and mother are the foundation of everything he knows, as he says in this uh, 73 interview, everything he knows. So I have made it my project's aim to think through what, 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 what that could offer us. And as he said in the film, his grandmother insisted upon Setswana being spoken at home clear and he she it was that was unnegotiable she would even as he said uh offer this condemnation if he uh, ventured into an english phrase or an english word she would say hey you know so she really was uh, was really um uh, strict about having him learn his mother tongue and be uh, uh, fluent in it and read in it and write in it. And that was fine when I had this story. But at the same time, she also expected him to get great results at the British colonial school. And then that also threw me off a little bit. But as time went on, I understood what these women were doing in his life. They were providing him with, uh, with the confidence in his culture and his customs, and the, they were equipping him with these tools of his culture and customs as a weapon against an invading culture, invading customs, invading cosmologies, because of course, we don't think of colonialism and it's, it's, um, it's various violences to also include uh, the cosmological one, the spiritual invasion. So Madikele and Ralehobe, I want to mention them by name. Madikele and Ralehobe were preventing a home invasion of the English and Englishness. And they were prevent preventing also the psychological and spiritual and emotional and psychic invasion of their son and grandson. They were also dream makers. They were impacting the future from their, their positionality that was quite marginal as black women at the time. They, who, they were oppressed on various levels from race to gender to class and to also being on the, on the rural uh, countryside, not in the city. So they used whatever agency they could find to shape the future through seeding, through planting these seeds in their son and grandson's mind to value commun community, to value communitarian values, to want to, uh, to, 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 to write and speak in the language and the culture of the people and not be distanced from it. And this would be very important for his political journey because that's what he always, um, that those were his politics. 
And we know these politics that were also articulated by people like uh, Amilka Cabral, also Ngugi Wationgo, that when we wage an anti-colonial and anti-apartheid struggle, we have to wage a struggle with the people, with the masses. It is with the masses that you can fight against oppression. And it, it, it must be with the masses that you fight against oppression. And to the masses you come from and to the masses you shall return. And so you have to speak in their language and write in their language. So what does that mean for someone who then had to live in exile? away from the masses, away from the language, because most of his poetry is written in English. I have taken the task of, 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 of applying a different lens in my work, of reading Khosizile's poetry to look for the, for, for, for particularly to the language of the poetry. What is he doing in his poetry with language? What is the parlance? What is the lexicon? What is the vocabulary of his poetry? And there you start to see and unearth the Setswana ness in his poetry that is in English. It is there in English, but those who have access to Setswana Sipedi, Sisutu, you will feel and hear, not feel and hear. The looking is deceptive. You will feel and hear the sounds and the proverbs of Setswana that are coming through in translation. And for him, this was, this was, this was how the, the creative process functioned as one who, whose, whose first language was Setswana, whose reading, who's coming into literacy was Setswana. This affected the tenor of his, of his poetry, the, 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 the tenor of his expression, even when it was in English. So, this politicization and cultural consciousness that was seeded in the home by Madikeledi and Ghalikhobi was so very, very important and pivotal because what it does then is give you or him the confidence to bridge Setswana and English. Had he only been taught only speak Setswana, do not speak that language of the colonizers, do not learn it, do not speak it. Perhaps he would have been a tribalist or he would have been an, a, 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 a cultural um, what, what, nationalist. But he was able to be confident in the foundation of his formative years and the language of the home without fear of opening himself to other cultures and bridge from the positionality of the home culture with other languages, with other cultures. And that is why he was in the US uh, during the black power movement, during the black arts movement. And he joined the struggle. He by any definition, he was part of these struggles without losing focus at the same time of him, his, the, 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 the particular site of the ANC struggle, uh, uh, the party that he was, that, that he belonged to. So he was, he was in the black power movement as an ANC member. He was in the black arts movement as a Sitswana writer, writing in the language of the movement. So this bridging quality, this bridging quality that was, that was taught to him by the women in his life became a lifeline. Became a lifeline that he, he was able to, to, without losing anything.
Zippo, or is it just my side? Uh, you back now. Um, at some point you were frozen in time. Oh really? What was that? What at what point? Oh, yeah. A few a sec few seconds ago, um, but yes, you back. So okay, thank you, Uhuru. Or would you like to continue? I wasn't quite sure uh, there. I also don't know. Did you get the gist of what I was saying? When did I get frozen? literally a few seconds ago so okay all right then it's did you give us six minutes each i gave you six minutes each we, all, we can always come back to you um okay. i'll try and figure out if sandy Lay is able to join us because i know that he's got problems with hcom on the other side so if he is if he's around um before he completely maybe goes off can we hear from you sandy Lay? Please unmute your mic, Sanila, because I can, I, can, I can see that you're visible. Uh, if you can just unmute your mic and maybe switch off the video. Sometimes it helps switch off the camera and just unmute your mic to speak. Hello. Is it better now? Yes, hello. Yeah. Well, you, you, you hear me better? Yeah, okay, when I'm invisible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'll I'll remain invisible. Uh, thank th thank thank you thank you so much. Uh, what time is it? Is 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 Eskom darkness time? Uh, it's, it's it's an honor for me really uh, to be to be uh, here, here with you. Uh, uh, apologies for the uh, you know I almost called it a breakthrough, but uh, it's a breakout of electricity really, uh, which is. Uh, uh, nothing poetic any longer in South Africa. It just happens. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just brutal. But anyway, uh, uh, my name is Sandy Lengiti. Uh, I write uh, in Zulu and, and a little bit of English, but I'm published more in English, of course, because that's where people get published often in South Africa. Uh, 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 Ukuluma ujule ezi kizweni zetu. Usi chinda oni mbeza gezi njela eza shugene. E, ubaba ukuluma ngo gubalile kakuwa mame e kaya. Ngoba pela ulimu luetu. Silungela kumame. Zonke izilimu za se Afrika. Izilimu zindabugo eza afelonga mate. Uh, tina having said that, uh, let me just say thanks uh, for, for, for showing us uh, that uh, short video and, and that Hosisile. Uh, uh, I remember a few occasions uh, when he would talk about the influences of uh, his mother tongue on, on the ideologies of his life, the ideologies behind his fire, his consciousness, his commitment uh, to the causes of justice, human rights, a liberated Africa, a liberated African diaspora, so to speak. 
he would always uh, regret because that's another word that he would he would he would imply, maybe not use, uh, uh, except maybe on one occasion when he did say he wished he had written more in in his mother tongue than he did in English. So uh, I don't know. So for me, having watched that video, uh, I'm interested maybe uh, in you know uh, in, in 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 pointing out a few aspects of 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 what I would call the missing links in the take. Uh, one is uh, what could have prevented uh, the great, our great poet from writing in Sichuana, uh, because he always loved that language and that language never escaped him. So what could have prevented him uh, to write as much as he could have, or I would say as much as he wished he had in Sichuana? And how did uh, uh, this this um, uh, uh, missing 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 uh, 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 link, so to speak, uh, uh, define his his legacy as an African uh, poet? In the video, get a sense that he was opposed to the position that was embraced by the eminent figures of African literature. Uh, at two major conferences, uh, or, or I would say actually the Makerere conference, if, if my memory is right, where, where English, uh, you know, took took uh, took the the crown, so to speak, and was endorsed as the language that African writers uh, uh, could rely on to express uh, themselves in, in in varied ways, particularly as as the the, the struggles for African uh, uh, freedoms. Uh, being advanced, so 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 why 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 didn't he 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 forge ahead, uh, you know, in as much as uh, one understands exile, you know, was no was no kindergarten. Yeah. So that is that is that is that is the that is the main thing. And how, as a policymaker, uh, did did Hosetila come back and advance uh, this African languages, uh, uh, for instance. My sense is that in as much as we don't get it in the video, I think he had that commitment and he did his best uh, in as much as uh, time was not in his favor because he, he really was not somebody who belonged in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the machinations of government uh, and, and the silliness that, that often go with that. Uh, but having said that, uh, uh, I, I see a lot of, of the African uh, in his work, in his poems, there's a line, for instance, where he says uh, something, uh, uh, something like, uh, "Somewhere in Africa, our ancients warned that uh, if you if you if you if you if you shit on the road, you you'll find flies on your way back, or you will meet flies on your way back." Uh, in different uh, African languages, uh, like he says, we do have this phrase, "You know. And, and 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 I love the philosophies of Africa in him through his work, through his poetry. Uh, and let me end then to shut our minds. Uh, of course. I'm glad you didn't get cut off by ESCOM. Uh, hopefully you'll still be here uh in the third segment um i, I hope i'm, I'm well, still grazing yeah well, yeah you can go hello. on hello hello you're talking to me what's happening now oh god um, is, so you're fine your your mic is unmuted Hello, can uh, you hear? You're talking to me? Yes. You're talking to Lesejo. Okay. Yes, Lesejo. Um, all right, all right. Uh, can I go now? I'm probably going to get cut off. I've been days without without electricity. All right. Um, well, first of all, let's let's start off here that for me, Hosicile, okay, beyond being a teacher, beyond being a, a poet, a theorist, was a sage, really. And I think having watched the video, one could then say that he must have um, 
sucked that from his grandmother and his mom. Also, as has been said, he, uh, he spoke a lot about having uh, fed of them, etc. Now, by that, I mean, if one looks at Khusitile's writing, most of his writing is good at, at um, uh, dispensing wisdom, dispensing knowledge, he's written poems to his kids, to, uh, to his nephews, his nieces. He's written to Ipelem, for example, to Katleo, uh, uh, to Zueli, and, and beyond that, he's written poems for and about music and musicians, Cassandra Wilson, Gloria Bosman. Khosizile was an internationalist. You know, he wrote from Uzbekistan to Ethiopia and back home. And um, as far as the music within the word itself, beyond just writing poetry in, in reverence and dedication to poets, he tried to capture the music of the word itself. So there was music within the way. That's why he could uh, uh, perform with Johnny Gianni, for example, in as much as he wrote poetry for him. That's why even the young uh, generation could embrace the hip hop in him, which some people might not be aware of. He appeared on Tumi Mulek and Tumi of the Volume, Tumi Stogie T's album. He had his own track on there because the young people could recognize what he could do with language and how in the same way as Gil Scott Heron and the last poets could have been said to be the godfathers of hip hop, so too Jose Zipe. Even if he was working within the jazz idiom, he was also a mentor. He mentored really great poets such like as Sterling D. Plum, to whom some of us look up. However, there is something that I'm missing here that there's a difference between the Khosizile that was in exile and the Khosizile post-exile. That the political machinations, the political maneuvering, the betrayals and the lack of trust, the fact that first of all, he had to battle in order to get his, uh, his pension, that he had to waive his struggle credentials in order to be recognized, that it actually came as a surprise that he was made poet laureate in South Africa for some of us. And also the fears that he, um, he had to labor under. For example, um, at the time when he came back, there was a fear that he would be taken out. Okay, once those fears were allayed, we went to, I'll give this as an example. We went to Alexandra because he wanted to go in and visit Brandemi Piliso. Upon entering the street, of Brantemi Piliso, we saw soldiers beating up people on that street. And Brantemi was standing at the gate. And he hadn't seen him for years. He just looked at us, he saw Khosizile, he looked back at the soldiers, and the first thing he said was, welcome home. Now, what I'm trying to say is, those things actually shaped how Khosizile came to write after he came back to South Africa, as opposed to how he was writing before him. Now, onto the issue of language. What I miss from the film is this. It ends at the point where Jose Tide talks about uh, little Europeans, about how Shoyinka et al's argument wouldn't apply to South Africa because uh, English writers were in the minority, but he actually, did an about turn on that when he realized that what was actually happening here was people who did not have much of a facility with their own languages, with their own indigenous languages, were pulling a hustle in those languages. We could name them, but why bother? But unlike, for example, somebody like Mazisi Bunene, who wrote in Isizuru and then translated into English. I only really know of one poem that Khosizile actually did in Setswana and then translated. And there's, there's a clip of it on YouTube or somewhere where he, he delivers it in the company of Maya Angelo to a poem written for Melba, who was his wife at the time. I don't know, there might be others. But to go on from what Sandile has just said, Khosizile attempted, as somebody has just pointed out, to tame the English language 
However, the flip side to the taming of the colonial languages is that in doing so, we actually enrich them. So it is a double edge play that. Yes, we are Temara. Chera try to do that. We try to do that ourselves. We try to tame this language, have the language speak in our own tongues, try to recreate it in our own image. But in doing so, we actually do enrich that most bastard of languages called the English language. All right, let's leave that for a minute. Um, Positina spoke on a number of, of issues. It did not exist on one plane of existence. It is incorrect to say Hositilo was this. He was this avuncular, gentle, kind old man. There was a time, first of all, when Hositilo and James Matthews were known as the terrible twins of South African literature, who read Havo on, a, on a literary festivals, for example. When Hositile came into a literary festival, people started shaking because he could be rude and unruly. But flip that to later years in Hositile's life, when he was embraced by all and sundry as this gentle and kind man that some people actually even took and violated in order to name, make names for themselves. But that's a topic for another day. That's a topic for another video. I think perhaps I should stop there. Before that, though, I think we should look at why Jose Zile had to write about Gloria Bosman, about Cassandra Wilson, about Jonas Kwangwa, Huma Sikela, and of course, overriding that John Coltrane, Zim Nawana, Max Roach, et al. And why he could ask in the poem for Brandemi. Have you not paid your dues from Galo to now? Thank you. Thank you, Lisiho. Um, thank you to all our guest speakers, uh, Sandile and Uhuru and Lisiho. We still have uh, a few minutes to go. Actually, we can go until half past three if need be. Um, usually around about now, this is when we get uh, discussions to pose questions to our, our guests. Usually dis the discussions would be facilitators and community arts, um, well, facilitators and artists, but we, we still have a very full room and I'm sure there are some people who might have questions for our guests. Uh, or perhaps even the filmmakers who are also in the room today. Um, the, the, the sessions are very interactive. So you're welcome to ask questions. And if you do not feel like being uh, live on air, you can use the chat button on the side to ask the question uh, and just keep the conversation going. Is there anyone who'd like to comment on what the speakers have said or on the film? You can unmute yourself. Uh, Paolo, are you indicating that you would like to speak? I'm wondering. Okay, there's no one else indicating if they'd like to go ahead and ask a question to our guest speakers or our filmmakers. I'll ask oh. a question if nobody else is. You have a question for someone. That's Bridget Thompson. Yeah. Well, I'll just make a, make a comment. Um, um, I, I feel very enriched by um, the presentations today. I mean, although, you know, we had, you know, whilst making the film, we'd gone to, you know, to quite a deep extent into 
um, an understanding of, of um, Brawili and his, his world and his life. Um, so I would like to really show um, a special appreciation to the speakers today. And I just like to tell a little story. Uh, the day that he died, I woke up in, 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 from a sort of dream state and I thought, I would like to get a reading list from Brawili. Uh, what were those books in Swana that he read? I wonder if, if Uhuru, if you know about the titles of the books that he read, or Lesejo as well. And I was thinking that would be such a wonderful project that we could do to try and understand these important literary figures, what were they reading? Um, because that could be a way of, of sharing some of their influences. It's just a thought. But perhaps um, you, some of you could answer that. Um, I didn't get the question. What what was the question? Roger, do you mind repeating the question, please? Yes, sorry, I was fiddling with my mute and unmute and all of that. Basically, uh, as I was saying, the day the day that he died, I woke up in the morning from a kind of dream-like state, and I was thinking, what were the books? That, what were what were those Tswana books? that Browilly was reading, mm. a young person. And I thought to myself, if only we had a reading list from him mm. of the books that were important in his life. And maybe, you know, because this project is very much an educational project, um, mm. something like reading lists of the, the favorite books or the influential books of these very important people in our literary heritage could be something that we could share with teachers and the schools and, and, and so on. So yeah. that, that was the question. If you know, if you know about that, it would be so nice to hear. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I of course asked him about um, some of these books, particularly when he was instructed by the senior leadership of the ANC at the time to um, to flee into exile, with the little time that he had to pack up his things and go with this appointed um, person that he was to live with. Uh, he packed uh, some of these Swana books with him and took them into exile. So that was what I was interested in. What was what, what were the titles of these of some of these Swana classics? Because he left in in sixty one, so that means there would have been earlier um, publications. So there was a Muzwasili uh, too. Muzwasili too was written by. Um, Leadile Raditladi. There was Dinsun Tsuzale Rado. Dinsun Tsuzale Rado, I forgot the author of, of that um, of that book. And there were five of them. They are not coming to mind right now, but you can find them on my, I wrote a, a very long obituary, it's online, and I, I think I mentioned them there, actually, I think, but yes, I'm very, very interested in zoning into these particular literatures, what, are, what, what is their content, for instance, so the, my forthcoming book on his life and work, one of the chapters is looking at how he transforms the drama in Mutswasili II, which is the real life drama of King Mutswasili, uh, who, uh, who was a king in Botswana at the time. So he transformed this, this real life drama, um, the politics in there uh, and adapts them to African-American politics or to, to kind of speak to, to the African-American struggle against Jim Crow and white supremacy. So I'm very much interested in, in that process of, of how the, his poetry bridges these worlds, how it moves from Sitswana language or Sitswana texts into his own English poetry. So I have listed, I have enumerated them some in one of, it, I think they are in the obituary. It's called uh, A Song of Constant Beginnings. If you, if you Google it, you should find them. But yeah, I listed five there. I hope that's useful.
I saw Sandy Le had his hand up, so please, Sandy. Le. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, you, you know more than most of us on these matters. You are, you, me, I'm just a student. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I saw uh, my dear brother, yeah, my dear brother, mm -hmm. Kunu, he was saying that he's disappointed that we're not mentioning uh, Jose Cilia's role in the Black Arts Movement. Uh, well, I would imagine that uh, some of these things are just implied, but uh, it is indeed uh, important and to 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 note uh, what uh, uh, um, uh, is, is raising, my one is raising, because the the, the critical uh, uh, role that in the in the connections in the in the solidarity studies towards the internationalists by. Uh, by my brother Lisiko also alludes to that, uh, and 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 the, and the poems and the work that he did with the with the with different uh, musicians abroad, particularly in jazz, uh, is 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 just locating uh, uh, his importance in the in, in that in the black arts movement uh, in in the U.S. and also uh, as, uh, saying very 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 strongly, as as perhaps this is what is required uh, of of RCA, is is that uh, he was integral. In the in the key foundation stones of of, of that movement in the U.S. Uh, and it's only now, ironically, uh, that uh, a very few scholars, for that matter, uh, seem to be uh, recognizing that role. Uh, I'm talking now about about scholars in the U.S. Uh, so so one can also sense uh, a certain insider outsider uh, position that uh, was part of the dilemmas of exile that the likes of Jose Chile and others, uh, I mean, were faced. Uh, uh, another very, very good example would be a figure like uh, uh, Eskia Mpathele, uh, Zikim Mpathele, who, 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 you know, who, who played a, a role that we've not begun really to, 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 to fully comprehend. And, 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 and an occasion such as this one uh, brings the possibility of, 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 of acknowledging uh, uh, that role but even more than acknowledging it, critiquing it, and, and how uh, 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 those interventions matter in the dreams of black people all over the world, in the dreams of black liberation all over the world. Because the Efeka like Jose Sile did not think in a jingoistic way. He thought of liberation as, 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 as something that belonged to all of us, not just to South Africans or to Black South Africans. Uh, he, he, he had that dream, but first and foremost, he realized this was a world that had, had, had brought so much violence to Black people uh, through various epochs uh, and so on. Uh, so thank you, uh, my dear brother, for raising that point, Vusi. Uh, Thanks, Andy. I'm wondering if Baba Rems is still in the house because I can't I can't seem to see him. There's a question for Lisiho. Is he still around? I would like to clarify something if it's possible. Okay. Abdul Kadir. Yes, <clears throat> first and foremost, greeting to everyone. And <clears throat> thank you for joining us. Um, there is a question that is pertinent on the making of the film that I would like to add something. Whatever has been said of uh, <clears throat> Rawili is uh, fundamental. Uh, we had a long interview that he covers. The film, first and foremost, aimed at the highlighting by his own word, the aesthetic of his work and how the aesthetic of his work. And we had a long interview and the film has, uh, was made in two versions. One was a long version. And uh, then secondly, it was requested to have a, a shorter version of a 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes for educational purpose, which everything cannot be encompassed. But the question raised about his role in America, the question raised about the books that he, says one a book that he left and he had to cross the river when he was going out South Africa and he lost some of the books, everything is revealed in the longer version. So sorry for that. And I had, it was necessary for me to explain 
that thing. So that is the only thing that I wanted to add about that. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul Kadir. Um, we have Brian Leslie Tigen. Um, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you because it's a, I just run the conversation now. But thank you for organizing the event. Uh, two things. One is that I think we need to understand by really in language, for example. That's what I want to talk about. I think that uh, the language question he understood better than any other participant would understand the language question. For him, language was power. That's, which means we are all colonized as South Africans, uh, Dutch, English, whatever language, but language of power. Therefore, then, the, his emphasis on writing Sisutu or any language was a contestation of that power. I was not saying that language is dead. It was a contestation of power, which is a contestation and a struggle that we must always engage in. But we must embrace language. Because for me to speak French or speak Dutch or speak any other language means that I also want to understand my other brother in Senegal, in, 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 in the uh, where. But that's what language is about. So we must not confuse this. We must not try to be nostalgic and go to the past. Language is there as a means for communication. That's what it is for. So that's the point I really want to play that, but I think he understood that very, very well. I speak French and I went to study French because 50% of Africa speak French. How do I speak to a guy from Canada? All of I must understand him. So it, it's necessary, but it is indeed as he has done and as we should do, a contestation of power, colonial racist power. But let's not miss the question and assume that because you speak another, yeah, that's why I always call myself not, I, I call myself, I'm a South African. And the, the guys who say they are Francophonies, uh, in the other, uh, they are, wherever in the diaspora, they I'm Francophone, you are Anglo. No. I'm not an Anglophone. I'm a South African. And the Senegalist is a Senegalist. He's not a Francophone guy. So let's get this thing very clearly and understand, really, really analyze, not emo emotionally, but think hard about what this means. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Leslie, and thank you for joining us. I had a question for Lisejo, but it doesn't seem like he's around. Um, so I will hold that uh, for him or... Um... Yeah, yeah. He hello. Hello, Sandile. Yeah, you know, you know, I don't understand why it is incorrect or nostalgic for Africans to 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 return or, or to to evoke their languages in order to uh, participate in a progressive uh, sense of agency at the current uh, you know at the current uh, juncture. In other words, as part of a continuum. Uh, even European North, North American modernities evoke their exemplary ancestors. They draw inspiration from their uh, uh, philosophies of life, of knowledge creation, and so on. I think the point about language that I is possibly being um, simplified if it is reduced to nostalgia is unfortunate. I doubt 
uh, you know, one would, would really venture into nostalgia uh, when it comes to, you know, to, to, to these matters. The potential for African languages as agents of progressive thought remains. That potential remains to this day. And the movements that uh, the movement in the uh, uh, literary uh, history uh, uh, of, of Africa that was dominant uh, really missed the point in my view. So I would argue differently and, and emphasize uh, uh, different points uh, to, to my dear brothers uh, Dikin without necessarily uh, attempting to diminish his invaluable input. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, may I jump in quickly, please? Uh, yes, Lucejo. Oh, yeah, I'm at 1%. This is going to kick me out. Look, I, I, I got frozen out at the point when the question had been raised about what had inspired Kositsile uh, by way of Setswana literature. Now, I think the one mistake we make sometimes is looking at books. Um, when it comes to Hositi, we would have to go, for, for example, to Botswana. In Botswana, there was an old man okay. called Radzie Setlako, who played an instrument called Sekhaba. It was this, uh, it had a god at the bottom and a string leading up to the top of Hello, Lisiho. I think his Hello. battery his battery went flat. He said he only had one percent battery. Yeah, but he's still on, so um I just assumed that he would have disappeared. I uh, disappeared. Um Okay, so we missed the, the comment by Lisiho. Can, can I say something? Yes, we have a few minutes left, so, but you can go ahead, Bridget. I think what he was um, starting to say was that we shouldn't only consider the written texts of, of, as being influential. And hopefully what he was going to build up and inform us on was some of the oral influences, which would be very interesting to know about because we know um, how much um, knowledge is contained in, in, the, in the oral forms of poetry. And perhaps again, we could ask Uhuru and Sandile to come back and, and maybe give us some, some more information about that. Um, I, I suspect that's where Lesejo was going. I hope he was. Hello. Hello. Oh, would you like me to say something? I'm not quite sure who's talking right now. Oh, it's Sandile, Sandile. Oh, hi, hi. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I thought she was say, I thought Bridget was saying I must say something. Uh, well, if I if I had uh, Bridget, well, let me just uh, appreciate my. Okay, let me just appreciate my sincere thanks for 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 the for the opportunity to say a few words. Uh, on, on, on the legacy of Hosicile. And I'm quite excited by the fact that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a legacy that has got uh, a lot of, 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 of contradictions and uh, it provokes uh, so much uh, debate amongst ourselves. Uh, but first and foremost, it is a very empowering legacy, uh, a legacy that continues uh, to, to, to enrich us in several ways. And by us, I, I mean people here in South Africa and people in many parts of the world. 
And I just hope uh, the work that uh, uh, Dr. Palafala and others are doing will continue, but also uh, that uh, a younger generation of, of thinkers, scholars, uh, will return to, to, to his work and, and, and engage with it uh, critically and, 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 and help us uh, uh, understand a lot that is still happening uh, in, you know, in our midst, in our politics. Uh, and we know that uh, at the time he died, he was extremely uh, disappointed about uh, uh, the dream of, of, of a democratic South Africa and how the dream uh, uh, you know, uh, seemed to be getting tarnished, and uh, and, uh, and 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 he felt the morality of 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 the ANC in power had had deviated from the morality of the ANC in in the, in the struggle. Uh, 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 thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sandile. Um. We will say bye in a few minutes, um, but I'd also like to remind you that all the previous sessions, including this current one, will be on our YouTube, uh, Ubuntu, uh, Arts and Ubuntu Trust. And also um, for educators and community art centers, if you know of anyone who, or you also are one of the facilitators or teachers, um, and you would like to access some of these materials, um, videos, and workbooks, you can send us an email, feedback at ubuntu.org. And also, um, If you'd like to, if you're not subscribed onto our, our mailing list and you'd like to get access into, uh, or you'd like to find out about the sessions that are coming up in the next few weeks, you could also send an email into inquiries at atubundu.org. Um, there might be some questions coming up. If you would like to say last words, you're welcome to do so. Uhuru will come back for listening to literature in about two weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but if there's anyone who has last comments or last words, uh, I can hand it to you now before we say goodbye. Hi, I've just taken my mic off mute. Is it cool if I say something? Yes, that's great. Ma'am, uh, just uh, a hearty thanks and uh, a lot of respect to, um, to uh, uh, the guests, uh, especially Uhuru. Uh, I thought that was really deep, opening opening um, with those insights uh, and uh, very, very spiritual. I just, yeah, I just feel intuitively that that was uh, marvelous. Um, also to say the, the effort that is coming through um, just by email, I'm an outsider living in uh, Kaberge um, um, but I, I'm vaguely involved with uh, community arts. You know, I used to give free lectures every week, um, and um, and uh, the Ernest Mankorba talk came to the then PE, uh, made an impact. Um, so yeah, just a lot of a lot of respect to everybody's efforts. Um, if I could just, in closing, say. It's so crucial to try to get th this material to into the mainstream. You know, I'm, I'm not aware um, as an art teacher, I was not really aware of, of what's happening in the literary spectrum uh, and what kind of anthologies are going into schools at the moment. Um, so I have no idea. But anthologies of, of great South African writers and great African writers, somebody must have put together um, uh, anthologies, and and the the question that came earlier about reading lists, um, wishing that uh, that that we got a reading list um, from uh, uh, that plays into this thing of of the younger people get into poetry, and the visual arts the better. It's it's there has to be a powerful effort from the university complex. <sighs> 
decolonized, colonized, uh, uh, really, I don't care. There has to be that powerful thrust that has to, has to overpower the bureaucracy and bring primary texts in, into primary schools. Um, I don't know how the, the academic folk feel about that. You know, um, I saw Lesejo in 1991 and there were some school kids at, uh, at the Hillbrow Theater in and around um, Hillbrow and Newtown. Um, it, was, it was unbelievable that primary school kids could be listening to that work. I'm sorry he's not on now. He, he was very young and extremely fiery. He just finished the Shifty Records. And, uh, you know, he, he's talking about the colonizers and these little kids for the first time pitching up to this nighttime gig at the Hillbrow Theatre. It was incredible. So that was the verbal performance version of breaking through the shell of, of, of bulldust. Um, that, that we're struggling against. And I, th I think it's got to come in, in some form of anthology. So that's my shot. Thanks, thanks so much. Um, and, and to the effort that uh, Art and Ubuntu puts, puts together. It's really been incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicholas. Um... You're most welcome. So next week, we are still on literature. I think for the next two weeks, um, we will be screening and also discussing work on Solomon Sol Czechish Um That's next Saturday. And the week after, we are reviewing a book um, on South African writers. Uh, if you'd like to get more information on that, uh, hopefully you subscribed and if you're not, please do subscribe and you will get all this information. Uh, Bridget is here and she would like to uh, give a voice of thanks, I think, to everyone uh, before we sign off. Bridget, are you around? Yes, I am. Um... Uh, it's it's a, it's a great pleasure to be able to thank everybody, and thank you, Nicholas, for remembering the work we did in, in Port Elizabeth on Ernest Mangoba. Um, it was in fact part of a national tour, and it was on that national tour that um, arts and culture teachers said to us, "We are very happy to learn about Ernest Mangoba, and we're grateful for what you're doing, but we need to know about other pioneers." And that's what provoked us to to do these short films they're deliberately short so they can be used in the classroom they none of them are more than half an hour long so that um there's time you know because a, a classroom period is 45 minutes so that there's time for discussion and i must say in these in these weeks we've been we've been benefiting so much from the discussion and that leads me to our speakers today um, Uhuru Palafala, Sandili Ngedi, and Lesejo Rampolo King. I'm so sorry that uh, Lesejo's battery has gone flat. But um, thank you so much for what you've, you've brought to the discussion today and the riches um, of your knowledge. And it's clear that um, even apart from studying um, uh, Browili's work, there's still a lot that we can share amongst ourselves between people who actually knew him and who were aware of his contribution, his pain, his suffering, the contradictions that he faced when he came back to South Africa and how he continued to speak out about them. Um, and, and also how his, his, his struggles, um, his engagement with the Black Arts Movement, which Vusi was making some wonderful comments in the, in the chat, um, raising um, the issue of, of how he informed the Black Arts Movement, who did allude to it as well, and how um, the importance of African languages, the debates in African languages, um, um, Professor Kwesi Pra's contribution to African languages. It was also wonderful to see in the chat, Graham van Veek mention how he remembers um, Khotsitsile's role at the culture and resistance in Botswana. So I think we amongst ourselves still have a lot of oral history to share and to record, which would contribute to understanding the rationale and all power to Uhuru for the work that she continues to do. 
And um, I'd really like to thank all the participants. I think some of you have signed off already. Um, well, I see um, Professor Machila has just signed on. Welcome. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you, you next next week. Um, but one of the things we, we um, we're really grateful for the, the, the quality of the, the contributions, the insightful questions, and how your participation makes it possible to, to get this thing moving. We're trying to get it eventually to schools, um, and, and that's where we, we, we hope it will have an impact on the next generation. And one thing, um, uh, being one of the filmmakers, I don't really want to be defensive about what we made, but I think that one of the things that is valuable um, and which we had debates amongst ourselves about how we should go about doing it, and I was of the of, of the inclination that we should make films that were very um, avant-garde, very much about the aesthetic of the person. And Abdul Qadir insisted that we should stick with the the basic stories of the things that they confronted, the things that they that shaped them as they were growing up. And I have to um, show my respect to Abdul Qadir in this instance because that is important. Like the story of um, Rawili's grandmother and the, those, those, those small and big indignities under apartheid, it, it, it brings a story alive. It understands uh, what does it do to a small boy to, see his grandmother humiliated because she, she trips and falls on, on a staircase. And how does that shape the person? So thank you, Abdul Qadir, for sticking with that approach. Um, in the last five weeks, it has proven valuable. And last but not least, a very big thank you to um, Zippo and Malik. Malik, can you show yourself briefly, just so that we all know who you are? Malik's behind the scenes operating the technology. And also to acknowledge, um, there you are. Hello, Malik. Welcome. And um, I'd also very much like to acknowledge the presence of two of our board members, our chair, Zubeda Jaffa, who yesterday received two big honours for her prodigious work. Um, and one was the top 50 women influencers, and the other one was to do with her work on Charlotte Makweke. And the other is Fusi Chunu, who you've already got to know through the chat. And thank you both of you for being here. We'd like to see you as well. In fact, why does everybody switch on their camera right now so we can see all of you and have a final snapshot, although some people have already left us. We'd love to see you all and just say hello and goodbye. And, and, and as soon as we've seen you all, we'll, we'll, we'll cut the conversation. And it's nice to see Woody here from Sweden. Welcome. Also, please note there's some uh... There's an event that Uhuru posted, which is happening on Thursday, if you're interested in uh, the recent publication that she's put out on uh, Brawili and Brahu. So please read your chat and follow the link uh, for the uh, post that Uhuru just made. Hmm? Some people are still shy. We'd love to see you. Woody, hello. <laughs> Professor Machila, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm in my pajamas. This is Zubaydah Jeffrey. Yeah, I'm not picking up. Okay, don't worry about your pajamas. We <laughs> <laughs> and Chippy, what about you? You're in quarantine, Chippy. You need to have a little party with us. Hello. <laughs> anyway, don't worry if you're also in your pajamas. Ah, there you are. And there's Leslie with you. Hello. Nice to see you all. It is me you. thinking that everybody's young. But now you see the pictures. It's elders. We are elders. <laughs> <laughs> we still got work to do. <laughs> we, we are busy. <laughs> <laughs> we still have lots Thank of work you. to do. No time to retire. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Bye. And thank you. And come Bye. again next week. You'll be welcome. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye. 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 God bless, Bye. people. God bless. Thank you. Salute.